All right, we're working, we're good. Okay, so let's talk about shifting your mindset around how to have a, a better a better feeling about self-care. Hey, Mary Perkins Cliver. So, and I also, there was a question in the group that I wanted to answer on here because I feel like it might apply to a lot of you. So I'm gonna go over starting to shift your mindset when it comes to taking care of yourself so that it feels good to do. Um, and then I wanna answer that question um, because I think that a lot of you can probably relate to, to feeling the way that it's actually Angela asked the question kind of feeling that same way. Um, and I, I've been speaking to a lot of you and connecting with a lot of you. Hey, Stacey Carlo. So I know that a lot of you are, are kind of in that same boat. So I wanna talk to that too. Okay, let's jump right in about the self-care. So like I said, everybody knows they should be taking care of themselves. So I'm not gonna come on here and preach at you like, hey, guess what? You should be taking care of yourself. Go do that, all right? I'm not gonna do that to you because you already know that and I'm not gonna be another one of those people because that's annoying. What I am gonna do for you though is I'm gonna help you shift your mindset around taking care of yourself so you don't feel so incredibly guilty and yucky and terrible and you can't make time for it in your schedule when it comes to that. All right, I want I want to start shifting that. And I'm going to start with kind of the big, lofty, huge, huge piece of this. And then we're going to break it down um, each week as we move through this, kind of like into smaller pieces for us to address. Um, and so, and I want to start with the big one. Sometimes I go the opposite way, but I really want to start with the big one when it comes to this. Because... I think when you hear it in the bigger sense, how I'm going to say it to you, I think that it has a, an impact at a deep level and it will really help you shift into changing, not just for yourself, but for other women and for the generation of women younger than us. Okay. So, so here, here's my, here, here's my, my really strong opinion and view on why we need to shift our mindsets around self-care. So in our culture, women are raised with the idea that being selfless is a good thing. That people who are selfless or who, who, who do selfless acts are celebrated, okay? Like, oh, she is so selfless. Oh, how amazing, okay? And we really celebrate and lift this up. We put on TV and in movies these, these mom figures and, and women figures who are the good guys and they are selfless martyr figures. Think of like sitcom TV moms, okay? And they may struggle a little bit with, with the martyr thing. They, they, that might be addressed but it always goes back to the mom doing the right thing and choosing her family, okay? Or the woman doing the right thing and, and going for love and doing what the guy wants, right? And uh, I could go on for hours and hours. The Disney princesses play a role in this too, guys. There's no women figures who are good, good guys, good girls. They don't exist. There's princesses and there's evil women. Okay, or there's really weak women. There isn't this model for us except for the martyr. Okay, and so what happens is we, we raised all these generations of women that are trying to be selfless because that's what's celebrated and that's what we're told is what a woman should be, and that's what we're told should fulfill us if we're selfless. Okay. Here's the problem. That has created a crisis of self-worth. I talk to people all day, every day. I've never met one person yet that doesn't suffer in some way in their life because their self-worth is too low. I have suffered for many, many years with incredibly low self-worth, self-esteem. Absolutely, one of my biggest struggle, I've shared it many times, and the kind of the turning point in my life was when I, I had these two babies and I was suffering from postpartum depression because I could not take care of myself and I couldn't ask anyone for help because in my mind I was following that, right? Like that, that martyr mom, woman, selfless woman thing, like that's what I was trying to be. And it almost took me out. 
And a lot of us have a lot of limiting beliefs around having to be selfless and around self-care. And a lot of us, if you're like me, you had moms who were promoting it to you, but they had their own limits, right? And so it's like passed down and maybe it gets a teeny bit better each generation, but I don't know about you, that's not good enough for me. We need to make a big change and we need to start inspiring each other to change that. So so here's my advice because I never just come on and complain about something without saying what I want. I, I, I really make a point to ever do that. So here here's what we need to focus on. Instead of celebrating that selfless person, oh she's so such a fantastic mother or such a fantastic woman because she's selfless. She just takes gets rid of herself. Like think of that word, right? What? Instead of doing that, what if we started to really focus on celebrating women who have a strong sense of self-worth? And this isn't just for the ladies, this is for the men too, absolutely. But I'm gonna talk specifically for, for women right now because this is where the crisis is. And if you're a guy, if you're a dude, David, if you're watching this or if, if the ladies are sharing this video and you're sharing it with other people because you feel like this might help them and there's, there's guys watching it, Great, because you need to help with this exact thing. We need to raise little girls. We need to set new examples and we need to catch when women are, are celebrating each other for being selfless, we need to catch that and we need to instead really promote a strong sense of self. So if you see a woman and she's doing all of these things that, that are selfless acts. If you instead asked, how can I support you so that you could take care of yourself too? I noticed that you're in a space of, of, of having to martyr yourself and I, I, I don't want to watch that for you. I don't want that for you. I want you to feel like you have, you have your own self and your own life and that they, that works harmoniously with everything else. And if we see a woman with a strong sense of self, someone celebrating or working towards knowing who she is, lifting that up and cheerleading for that and, and saying, how can we take this person stuck in the selfless zone and help them get to that strong sense of self zone? Does that make sense? That to me is just so incredibly needed right now. I have this conversation almost everywhere I go because people ask me about this. Mothers say, what can I do for my daughter? She has no self-worth. Women are stuck in their lives and they have these things they want, but they feel frozen and they can't go for them because they feel stuck, because they feel afraid. And it's coming from these ties to self-worth that are outside of ourselves and this desire to be, to be selfless. And then you go down that road. As someone who did, you go down that road and it's awful. And you know what? You suck at helping everyone else when you're there because you're too drained and you're too tired and you're too exhausted. You don't have a bright shining light when you're in that space. You have a dull one. Okay, when you're taking care of yourself, when you're filling your cup up, you have more to put in all the cups around you. So I don't want you to become somebody who, you know, ignores their children and, you know, loved ones and stops going to work and spends millions of dollars every month on, um, you know, fancy spa treatments. That's not what I'm looking for. You're all the empaths of the world. I want you to keep serving. I want you to take care of other people. I want you to do that, but not at the expense of yourself anymore. You have to also work on being the best version of you because that's how you truly go out and help other people, okay? So that's where I wanna focus. That's where I wanna work. Um, my husband just got home, so I was just waving kind of him. That's where I want you to be to be shifting and I want you to comment on what comes up for you even if you're watching this later what comes up for you when you really think deeply about that when you think of shifting that for yourself and when you think of even trying to celebrate that outwardly to other people and other women what comes up for you okay who do you know in your life that either has a strong sense of self or is working towards having a strong sense of self who do you know Give them a shout out, give them a call, um, text them, send them an email. Next time you see them, say, you know what? I, I, I see that you're working on yourself and strengthening that sense of who you are. And I think that's amazing and should be more celebrated. Go you, high five, right? Don't think of it as becoming someone who's selfish. It's not selfish to be a strong version of yourself. That's how you truly serve other people. If I walked around like that insecure version of myself and I never took care of myself and I never worked on my own stuff and I didn't create balance in my life so that I felt happy, 
I would not be very good at helping other people. I would not be able to serve people at the level I serve and give as much of myself as I give. And I wouldn't be able to have these creative ideas and downloads and connections because I wouldn't be working on being who I am. I wouldn't be constantly evolving and discovering her so that she can help more people. And it's the same for every single one of you. And it's the same for anyone watching this. You have to start shifting into that belief inside of you, and then we can spread it outward and we can really make a change here. Because I, again, I, I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone who doesn't have some kind of stuck in their life or pain in their life that's coming from having a shaky sense of self-worth, of uh, 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 working towards being that martyr and, and that selfless person and feeling guilty of moving away from her. People constantly, and this is going to lead me into answering the question that was in the group, people constantly, constantly, constantly have to do a lot of work around being okay with possibly hurting someone else who's trying to hold them back and not allow them to be themselves. They'll stay not themselves at the risk of hurting of not hurting someone else. They don't want to go be who they are because they're afraid that it might make somebody else uncomfortable. That's how much, that's how far down we are in the self-worth place. And that's not uncommon. It's way more common to experience that than it is to just go out there and just be like, well, I know I'm doing the right thing. And someone who's trying to hold me back from being authentically me and not cheering that on and clapping for me, they're stuck in their own stuff. And, and me growing is, is causing them pain, not because it's, it's mean or selfish, but because they can't quite get out of where they are. So maybe if I do it, it will inspire them to make some shifts in their life, even if they can't share that with me or they never end up clapping for me. Make sense? So one of the questions that was in the group that I wanted to make sure I got to was one that Angela asked. So she did um, one of the free 30 minute calls with me and Angela asked uh, uh, on it, we discovered what Angela's purpose is here in life, which is really exciting. And I love doing that. And I love that sometimes within 30 minutes we can chat and then we can know something like that. That's really powerful. I know a few, um, a few more of you have, have gotten your purpose words and have, have got clarity on that. And that makes me really excited. Um, so she's discovered it. But now she's, she's in that place of experiencing fear around, well, okay, I know what it is, but I'm really scared to share that with the world. And I'm really scared to tell people because I'm afraid of the judgment that's going to come. So what I want to do is point out the true fear here. Okay. Michelle Wood says, I need that. Yes. I think we all need that a little. That's why I wanted to answer this in a video and not just comment back to her because I think there's so many people that this is... A applying to right now. Okay. So, and it, it feeds in perfectly with my subject tonight. So that's was even more perfect. I was like, we're talking about this. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. The real fear when you're fearing judgment of other people, the real fear is that you're going to feel a certain way while they're judging you. You're not actually fearing the judgment itself. You're fearing that it's going to create like a, a connection to a truth that you've set up about yourself that's inauthentic. And so let me explain what that means. If you fear people judging you and you, you start to think about what am I imagining they're saying as um, I'm putting myself out there? And you might think that's silly, but that's really important because that's going to tell you the root of it. And so you imagine like 10 different people are, are just slamming you and they're saying terrible things about you going after um, your dreams, which won't happen, by the way. But there'll be a few, but there won't be 10. But say you imagine that there's 10. And they, they come out of the woodwork and they're, they're saying, what are they saying in your head? Imagine that. What kinds of things are they saying? Are they all along the lines of you being unintelligent? Are they all along the lines of you being unqualified or not worthy enough? Are they all along the lines of you um, being irresponsible? Are they all along the lines of you being a bad mom or a bad wife? What's in common with all these imaginary disses? Okay, because what that's going to tell you, it's going to tell you what you have your self-worth tied to. Now, like I was saying, we have this self-worth crisis right now for women in our culture. And it's not just the women. I recognize that it's with the men too. Absolutely. But with the women, it's really being called to be woken up to now. 
Okay. Like very, very strongly. So that's why I'm focusing here, but all of this applies to the boys too. Okay. So what we need to look at is what is this self-worth tie? When you have ties to your self-worth, it means that the power for you to feel good about yourself is in everyone else's hands except yours. Okay. And that is a dangerous, shaky, never works out very well place to be. And the reason why you want to know the exact imaginary disses coming your way is because it's going to point right at the self-worth tie. Okay. So for me, I'll tell you what mine was when I, when I first started, I was imagining all of these people saying that, um, I wouldn't be able to do it that I was going to fail and that I would, that I wouldn't be able to handle being both the kind of mother I wanted to be and the kind of engaged entrepreneur business owner that I wanted to be. So every sort of fear thought was of people being like, there's no way she can do that. There's no way she can handle that. There's no way she'll balance all of that. She'll go under. And, and as I looked at that, I thought, okay, interesting. What is that tied to? And I thought, well, if I can't handle it, wouldn't I ask for help? And then I thought, oh, there it is. I have a tie with my self-worth of I can't ask for help. I'm only worthy of love and good things and success if I don't ask anyone for help. So if, if I'm out there and I'm imagining all of those and I go down to the root and that's where it is, I don't actually need to focus on everybody else and what they think of me. I need to focus on getting rid of that tie, okay? Now here's the thing. It gets easier once you start putting yourself out there because most people are gonna celebrate you, not because they're all fantastic people. Most people are good people, okay? But because they're gonna look like assholes if you're like, hey, I am following my dreams and putting myself out there and I'm going for this. And if they publicly comment on social media, like that sounds terrible, they're gonna look like assholes. And most people don't wanna look like assholes on a regular basis, just saying, okay? What's gonna happen is that behind your back, people may talk, but they might say good things and they might say bad things. You have to let go of worrying about that. Because here's the thing, you can do everything perfectly right. You can bend over backwards to make other people happy and they will never feed your self-worth in the way you need them to ever. So you need to take back your own self-worth by discovering where those ties are. So do a little exercise where you, and Michelle Wood says, removes your power wand. Absolutely, you've got to be holding it. Do a little self-worth exercise and see what are the things you have to be or have to do to feel worthy of love? Or is it hard for you to ask for help? Another thing for me that was hard when I when I started to hire, when I had a coach and they were they were telling me like, okay, you've got to share more of your struggle. I was like, oh no, no, no. I have to appear like perfect to everybody else if they want my advice, right? And I, I said that. I truly thought that that was actually true. And I thought, well, I need to, I need to have more experience and I need to know more things. And I, I can't put myself out there yet. And I have to look perfect when I do. That was so far from true because when you appear that way, no one relates to you, right? I mean, you don't want to walk around like, you know, oh my gosh, my life is terrible, but you definitely don't have to be perfect. I discourage you from being perfect. You want to share who you are and you want to say, I've been through this and I've learned this and you want to take whatever that this is and you want to start sharing it, however far down the road you are, okay? So let's say that the thing you want to do is you want to go out into the world and you want to teach people how to make more money. You want to say, I'm going to be a coach and I'm going to be an abundance coach. And I'm going to teach you how to make more money. And let's say that what you've learned is to make it so instead of not being able to pay your bills every month, now you can pay them. So you're not a millionaire yet. You haven't got, you haven't crossed even the six figure mark yet, but you're, you've gotten from there to there and you want to start sharing that with people. But you say, well, I better wait till I'm a millionaire. No, go and look at what did I do to get from not being able to pay my bills to being able to pay them comfortably. And how can I teach other people to do that and go do that. And as you're doing that work to learn more. And once you get to that higher place where not only are you able to pay your bills comfortably, but now you can put X amount into your savings account every month and go teach people how to do that. Take people along with you because the more you do that, the more you're going to learn.
Get rid of that idea that you have to have it all together and be perfect first, right? So think about where were you and where are you now? And how did you get there? And how can you help other people do that? And as you continue to grow and expand and learn, as you go there, then turn around and help people with that. That's what a true healer does. That's what a true empath does. That's what a true leader does. Make sense? So figure out, so there's two pieces of this advice. Let me recap it for you real quick. Figure out what exactly is the self-worth tie. So imagine all these critics that are not going to show up. Okay, there's going to be some, but it's not even close to as many as you think. Okay, so imagine these critics. What are they all saying? All right, what are you fearing could be true about what they're saying? Look to that, ask yourself questions till you see what that is. And you say, I am not going to have my self worth connected to always being okay or never needing help or being perfect. I'm going to work on letting that go. And as you do, think about what is it that, where have you gotten from? Have you gotten from point A to point B? How can you help other people do that? I don't care if it's a tiny baby step. Let me tell you with that scenario I gave you before. If somebody here, somebody who can't pay their bills, hears somebody say, I went from not being able to pay my bills to being able to comfortably pay them. And I can teach you how to do that with this two day lesson. And it's X, I know you don't have a lot of money because you're only here. So it's only $25.99 and I'm going to teach you how to get from there to there. This is how it felt when I was here. This is how it feels when I was there. It's quick. It's easy. I want to get you there. Let's try it. Let's go. Okay. And you offer that. People will buy that. People would love that. That's a beautiful thing to give to people. Go you. All those people struggling will be helped. Maybe if you came out and said, hey, people who can't pay your bills, um, I went from that to being a millionaire and now I have so much money that I, I use it to, um, I don't know, to blot my makeup off at night. Um, and I just throw it and I sleep in a pile of it and it, like who even cares? And that's me. Those people who can't pay their bills probably won't relate to that anyways. So they're probably just going to be like, yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. You have to help people along as you're moving along. So think about it in that sense, and it will become a lot less overwhelming when you think about what am I going to put out into the world? Now, maybe you don't have any desire to be some sort of coach or some sort of helper or some sort of healer or run your own show. That's okay. But if you know what your purpose is and you know what you've learned in it, realizing that you're now an expert in that and can help other people will help you in your current job. It will help you as a parent. It will help you as a uh, partner in a relationship. It will help you in your friendships. It will help you everywhere. Looking at what you did to get from point A to point B will help you. Because now you can go and you can figure out, now how can I take that info to help me get from point B to point C? And when I get there, I'll know more and I can help more. Make sense? I hope that it does. I hope that all of this makes sense. You're going to hear me talking a lot about this move from selflessness to a strong sense of self-worth. I'm going to be talking about this a lot. You, my beautiful rebels, were the first to hear about it. Um, I feel very passionate and very strongly about it. And it's the reason I chose self-care for this month. Um, and uh, along with another reason where one of our fellow rebels, I think, has a, a purpose in this. And so I thought this would be a good um, inspiration for her as well. So um, so that's why it's here. You're going to hear me talk a lot about this. A lot, a lot.